Hey guys, welcome back to AdLib Talk, and today I'm going to be giving you part 2 of the top 10 sci-fi movies to watch on Netflix in Malta. Before I start with the list, don't forget to like the video, and please do consider subscribing if you enjoy my content. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to watch part 1 of this list. You can find the link in the description below. Number 5 is The Matrix. Directed by the ingenious Wachowski sisters and starring Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Ann Moss, Hugo Weaving and Joe Pantoliano, this is one of those movies which defined a generation. Thomas Anderson, aka Neo, works in an office while is doing part-time hacking to maintain himself. He meets Morpheus, who blows his mind and the audience's mind with some spectacular news. Now I won't spoil, in case you're one of the few who still hasn't watched it. Just know that if you like sci-fi action movies with a clever twist, this is the movie for you. This was the movie that pioneered bullet time action used so poorly in so many crappy action movies. However, in The Matrix, the spectacular special effects and action scenes are all in service of the story, which whilst not being as deep and talk-provoking as it seems to think, is still adequate for the kind of movie it is, and I think that that is what made the first Matrix much better than 2 and 3. The performances are all decent, especially Keanu Reeves, who gives us a career-defining performance as Neo. Yes, some of the writing is a little cheesy. But having rewatched The Matrix recently, I was shocked by how good the special effects still hold today more than 20 years later. This one is a must-watch, and not just for sci-fi fans. Number 4 is Blade Runner 2049. Directed by one of my favorites, Denis Villeneuve, and starring Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford, Blade Runner is one of the best sequels ever made. Villeneuve successfully continues discussing the themes from the first movie, whilst also adapting and giving his own twist. It is set 30 years after the events of the first movie. We follow a new Blade Runner, Kay, who is led into a discovery which can potentially change the way people look at life. It is best to go into this movie, however, knowing little to nothing about the plot. Visually, this competes as one of the most stunning movies I have ever seen. Roger Deakins has truly outdone himself once more. And just like in the first Blade Runner, the world building is also brilliant. Like some of the movies on this list, it provides you with a number of philosophical ideas, meant to make you question life. It is a slow-paced movie, and I applaud Villeneuve for being brave enough to direct a film like this in a time when everything is so fast-paced. The plot is allowed to develop at its own time, and it also gives us the chance to appreciate the beautiful landscapes. How many movies have you seen recently that allow you to take a breather? The performances are all excellent, especially Gosling. This is an example of a movie which isn't hindered by the need to make a ton of money. The director had a vision and was allowed to complete that vision in an epic, almost three hour movie. Number three is Interstellar, directed by the great Christopher Nolan and starring Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, Bill Irwin, Ellen Burstyn, Matt Damon, and Michael Caine. This is one of the most epic films I have ever seen. It is set in a dystopian future, and one in which humanity is truly struggling to survive. I will not say anything else about the plot, as it is best if you view this film knowing almost nothing except for the fact that it is about a group of astronauts who leave Earth in search of a new home. Yes, this is a beautiful movie. Nolan has created a magnificent film, visually speaking. But as he does so well, he imbues his films with a certain emotion. In the case of Interstellar, we have a simple relationship between a father and a daughter. Now that is the emotional core of this film, and it is what breeds life into all the glorious visuals on the screen. Once more, I have to mention Hans Zimmer, who has given us such a haunting score, which is able to push both the epicness and the emotions at the appropriate moments.
What makes this better than Inception, in my opinion, is that the worlds our protagonists visit are so wondrous. I'm no scientist, so I can't really comment about the, the science behind the movie. But I have read yet, yes, there are some holes here, although overall, it is based on real scientific theory. Christopher Nolan really does know how to get great performances from his actors, and I have to mention McConaughey here, who gives us such a heartfelt performance, showing off true emotion. Now, if you want beautiful visuals with a clever plot and a strong emotional core, this is the movie for you. Number two is 2001 A Space Odyssey. The first time I watched this movie, I remember thinking it was boring and pretentious. Yes, I was young, and to be fair, I still do think it is a little pretentious, but it did make number two on the list. Directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Kiri Dalia and Gary Lockwood, this is the kind of movie that you have to watch a number of times. It's one of the most influential movies of all time, and probably the most important sci-fi movie ever made. Thematically, I believe this is as good as it gets, dealing with themes like existentialism. The plot leads us through a voyage to Jupiter with AI HAL. Keeping in mind the film was released in 1968, there is little I feel I can add to what has been said about this movie. It was visually ambitious, had never before seen special effects, involves one of the best ever soundtracks ever made, But this is a slow movie, with scenes which have little or nothing to do with the plot. The film involves very little dialogue, which may be a shock to some viewers. Yes, you need to be patient. However, your patience will be rewarded. There is no doubt many directors like George Lucas and Steven Spielberg have been strongly influenced by this movie. This was a movie that started a fascination with sci-fi in the 70s and beyond. One could almost say we have Star Wars because of this movie. I also have to make a quick mention on Hal, probably one of the most intriguing antagonists to ever be seen in a film. And don't forget, Hal is an AI. That was the genius of Kubrick. The AI is the character with the most compelling and emotional character arc throughout the whole movie. Daisy. 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 Give me your answer to. I'm crazy. All for the love. This may not be for everyone, but if you want to see the movie that has influenced basically every sci-fi space movie since 1968, you have to watch 2001 A Space Odyssey. And even if you do not enjoy it, you must appreciate Kubrick's vision and his impressive cinematography and use of perspectives throughout the movie. By the way, speaking about Stanley Kubrick, number one, A Clockwork Orange, directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Malcolm McDowell, First of all, please, don't watch this movie with your kids. It is intense and disturbing, even by today's standards. However, this is all in service of the plot and for the vast social, political and economic commentary it passes. This is an adaptation of Anthony Burgess's novel. Set in a dystopian near future Britain, Alex is an anti-social delinquent and leader of the Droogs who spend their nights terrorizing people of various social classes. Eventually, he ends up in prison after one of his misadventures goes awry. Alex then accepts to be treated by the Ludovico behavior modification technique to earn his freedom, but this leads to a number of horrible consequences. First of all, I must praise Kubrick's amazing vision. No one makes movies like him today. This is a masterpiece, a work of art which is the definition of compelling and thought-provoking. Nothing goes unscathed underneath Kubrick's social commentary. A Clockwork Orange is a product of its time, yet genius transcends time 
and thus its social commentary is still relevant in 2020. If that's not enough, McDowell's performance as Alex is one of the best performances I have ever seen. He dominates the screen with his charisma. He evokes a whole range of different emotions, sometimes tortured, sometimes greedy, sometimes defiant, and not to mention his amazing accent. It's no good sitting there in hope, my little brothers. I won't say a single solitary slogan unless I have my lawyer here. I know the law, you bastards. I would also like to comment about Kubrick's ever-brilliant cinematography. His use of close-ups and long shots, amazing lighting and shadows, are all employed exceptionally well here. The soundtrack also has to be one of the best soundtracks ever conceived, playing an important role in the plot, yet also matching so well thematically with the movie and its main character. It's interesting to note that this movie was actually banned in the UK, as requested by Stanley Kubrick himself. After the release of this movie, a number of crimes were committed in the UK, mimicking some of the crimes seen in this movie, including rapes and murders. The film had already created a large hysteria due to the scandalous sex scenes, so in 1973 it was removed from circulation in the UK until the director's death in 1999. Luckily, today we can all watch this movie and enjoy this masterpiece. So there we have it, that was my top 10 sci-fi movies available on Netflix and Malta right now. What do you think? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more, don't forget to leave a like and please do subscribe, it would really help my channel grow. Cheers, and I'll see you guys next time. I've taught you much, my little droogies. Now tell me what you had in mind, Georgie boy. <laughs>